Today, Carmania with the legend, the Ford Focus RS MK2. Investment or waste of money? Is the five-cylinder the last surviving street legal rally car? Is it better than the new? What's so special about it? How fast is the 300 horsepower hot hatch? This and a lot more, now! Hey guys, I'm Chris, welcome. What are legends made of? Well, sadly and mostly, they're made of the fact that they're dead, but sometimes the death of something can even turn to an advantage, and the best example for that is the five-cylinder engine of the Ford Focus RS MK2, which died and got six years later replaced by a downsized 2.3-litre four-cylinder engine, and this is what made this car a legend. One of the last five-cylinder cars on the market, and of course really unique and that's why this car mania episode is a review of a legend okay i'm not going to be introducing something to you that's been on the market for almost seven years now but i think this car deserves to have a quick chat about these optics it's so much more muscular than the new rs with these road houses the air intakes and that brutal world rally car optics but what's really standard about this car what has the owner changed let's check it the owner of that beautiful piece of design is Michael, who's standing right next to me. And for every one of you who wants to buy that car on the used market, just to show you what is standard and what is not, because Michael just changed some little details. Michael, what have you changed on the car? So right from the optical aspect. So I changed the RS logos. I wrapped them by myself because I don't like the blue. So I think now it's more elegant and eye-catchy at the same time. Fitting to the brake calipers, yes. I made them on my own golden as well. So what used to be blue is now golden. And I did some additional small wrappings, just like these arrows for the towing eyelet. And of course, the exhaust system is not standard as well. Because the standard exhaust system is a bit... So it's not loud enough. It's a bit boring. So that plops and flops of the five-cylinder is a lot better now. It's HMS. And is that a complete system or just the end part of the exhaust? It's complete, yeah, it's a complete system. The cat is HJS, a 200 cell cat. It doesn't have a mid pipe, but of course it's everything registered, so it's legal. Mm -hmm. We in Germany, we have to be really accurate with these kinds of things. And what about the size of the exhaust pipes? Because my fist, which is not small, almost fits into that pipe. Is that the same with the standard? Well, the size of the pipes is a bit bigger now. I don't know the standard now, but... But of course you can find exhaust pipes being a lot bigger than that. But I wanted it to fit the car. And this is standard, the RS, that means Rally Sport, so of course it needs to have a wing. And now from the side view, what have you done? So again here you can see the RS logos, golden mat. I did that on my own, as I've already mentioned, with a sharp knife, but it was a really detailed work. Now, you can't really see that it's been done by an amateur. So it's really good, yeah, you, you, you did a quite good work. And of course the writing. I have to say, I don't like writings on cars, but this writing is quite impressive. And I saw some pictures of this car before it got uh, these writings, or that, uh, yeah, wrapping. And it didn't look as, I don't know, as impressive as now. Uh, Have you done that on your own too? Yeah, I quite, just with some friends together. They helped me, so I did the brake calipers even in gold, because I wanted to have that black, white, golden contrast. This is also wrapped. And of course I have the map flaps that you can see behind each wheel. I imported them from England, this is an English company. 
bringing them to Germany so you can find diverse companies offering them. And 19 inches is standard. Yeah, it's the same size, just like standard, but now you have a different uh, inset. It's now 45. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be them as flush as possible with the body of the car. And that matte graphite, that's the color of these rims. I think they fit the most to, to the rest of the car, to that white color, which is not standard white. It's not too much, but it's, it's brighter, it's frost white. So it's a lot brighter than regular white. Just like with my M135i where we compare both whites and yours is a lot whiter. So you can play around with the accents a lot better with this one. Here I just wrapped the air intakes. Normally they again frost white, but you can't see them so that's why I decided to wrap them to look more brutal, mean, with these air intakes in black and it fits better to the rest of the black parts definitely yeah so they could have done it right from the start and of course again that arrow showing the towing eyelet and altogether it's even in standard it's really muscular and mean the focus rs but the most time of the day you spend in the car and not outside of the car unfortunately somehow because the rumors that the Focus RSs look a bit shabby from the interior, uh, I can confirm them. So um, I don't want to explain so much about it as we just, you know, the car's been on the market now for seven years, as I've already mentioned. But uh, in a summary, so we've got lots of plastic, of course. Um, this is soft touch, but this is plastic, this is plastic and it's hard plastic. Altogether, it's less the plastic factor. I think it's more the question why Ford hasn't uh, individualized the car more to make it more an RS because it's too much standard. So where the exterior is so um, unique, the interior is pretty standard, just like the other focuses. Um, starting with the dashboard, so it's quite standard. Okay, um, the scale goes until 280 because the top speed is 263, 263 kilometers an hour, but the rest is standard. Um, even the steering wheel, except that RS logo, but it seems to me that the designers just went out of patience or something like that. Um, just the same with the, with the a gear shifter. It doesn't look so RS special like it looks from, from, from the optical package from the outside. We have carbon fiber look-alike here. I'm not sure, so I don't want to say anything wrong before the Focus RS fans start to kill me. Um, but it seems to be just uh, a blending. And um, yeah, so this is it. The only difference to the regular focuses is that additional instrument part here where you have, um, was haben wir hier? Wir haben uh, Öldruck, Öltemperatur und, und Turbodruck. So it's oil temperature, oil pressure and turbo pressure. This is something that also the ST has. So the five cylinder ST from back then. Um, but there is also two uh, positive points. Number one, what was really surprising me positively, is the legroom that you have behind these shell seats. So an adult person could easily sit behind me, and I'm not a small guy. And uh, it's quite surprising. So I was sitting behind myself, and um, it's quite comfortable, so you could even have longer trips uh, sitting on the back seats, and they're quite really soft. And um, the other thing is, of course, the trunk load of 385 litres. So the car is um, definitely has a family usability, even if it doesn't pretend that from, from the optical package, so it doesn't really look like a car that has so much trunk load in space. And uh, the other thing is, it's these gorgeous seats. So again, here now is something that I have to praise. They don't just look fantastic, they even feel fantastic. That that color accent with that blue, the form of these seats, the name shell seat is really a shell seat. The lateral support that you have, so the side support, just like in the World Rally car, and uh, this pulls up uh, the image of the car again from the interior. What you might be missing with uh, with the center console quality, and um, they are a lot softer than they look like. And even on longer trips, if you've brighter shoulders, like me, it's comfortable. So 
shelf seats at their best, just like you expect them to be. Um, you could also have uh, a screen that you could also have a Navi, stimmt? Yeah, yeah there is also a Navi screen, but I don't think it fits to the car. Because it doesn't fit the concept of the RS. Okay. Warum? Why? Well, it's even more plastic look like. So it's just like that grey colour here, but it's more surrounding uh, plastic in that grey colour and even the display is not really sharp and I think the Sony radio fits better to the whole concept. So as you can hear, it might not be good to have the Navi screen, sometimes it's better to have less. And maybe this is the concept of the Ford Focus RS, to be less um, and have more driving experience, more the purists, and maybe this is the idea behind the Ford Focus RS. So it has that advantage that you don't really care about it because um, you live the purism, you live uh, that sound, and uh, I hope that pure driving experience, what we're going to be finding out now in a few minutes when I'm driving it. So get rid of that luxury problem from the interior. It's good as it is, it's okay. It's a world rally car somehow. And now let's drive it. So now this is a kind of a world premiere to me because this is me for the first time driving uh, the Ford Focus RS. And you can immediately hear that amazing sound, yeah. And I'm really curious about its behavior as I drive a six cylinder and though there is just one cylinder in between it's kind of a big difference and from the first meters I can say it feels really pure so it's um, it's a performance car somehow Can feel you can feel it vibrating at the steering wheel at the gear shifter the doors um, the insulation is not so perfect but this is perfect because you can hear the engine sound listen to that this is what a car enthusiast wants to hear fantastic so um, this is actually what I expected this car to be to be a car of purism so it doesn't pretend to be something what it's not so there is no uh, adaptive suspension bullshit this and that comfort no no comfort this is an rs so rally sports car that is not rs genau rally sports car and um, this is how it behaves it's it's really so the suspension is amazingly stiff so if i compare it to my m135i it's a totally different world, so my car just feels like an S-Class Mercedes compared to that one. Um, but this is perfect, you know, everything just like an orchestra. It's a perfect orchestra to a car enthusiast's ear. Um, it's pure, these plops and flops and everything out of the exhaust pipe is just amazing. Let's talk a little bit about that engine, what we have under the bonnet, what makes it a legend. It's the 2.5 litre five cylinder engine, what we already know from uh, the Ford Focus ST, but it's a totally different thing because it's not just a software update, it's uh, many hardware parts that got changed. So um, we have a uh, cylinder head is, is wider, uh, the intercooling is, is different, um, it's a big bigger intercooler, bigger turbocharger, um, the charge pipe is bigger to gain the power of 305 horsepower instead of the 226 that the ST has. But this here is not really just like it was in the original stage. Michael, what have you changed on the car in a summary? What's different to the power? It's a different software that a friend of mine wrote. So it's optimized, it's an ECU tune, it's an ECU optimization. And the injection got changed and modified. The suspension is still stock. I didn't want to change it because it really drives 
perfectly everywhere I go and um, it has a perfect setup in my eyes but it shouldn't be stiffer anyway should it be because it's just like on a railway yeah it's really perfect to me and of course the exhaust what you've changed and what we've already talked about at the beginning so you have the, tur the turbo whistle and the flops and pops out of the exhaust pipe it, I just feel like in Fast and the Furious it's a pure driving car um, how much horsepower do you have now instead of the 305 horsepower because you haven't been to the dyno yet? Well, about 340 horsepower is what we think and about 460, 470 newton meters instead of 440. Yeah. So I didn't want to do more because I want to have a stable engine, a long lasting engine. And you can do a lot more than 500 horsepower with these cars and with these engines. But then they're not really long-lasting, how I think. And I want to enjoy my car as long as possible, of course. And that's why I decided to have a soft tune on the ECU. And it's enough pressure, it's enough power to me, so I don't really need more. So you're quite close to the horsepower of the RS500, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is something that I want to get to because um, uh, the Ford Focus RSs have a longitudinal dynamic problem, so they're not really as fast as they should be. The thing is that it's a performance car, this you can see on, on the time performance that it does on the Nürburgring, the fastest front wheel drive uh, at that time, and uh, it was 8 minutes and 26 on the Nürburgring, and on the small circuit of uh, Hockenheim it used to be um, 1 minute and 17. And this shows that Ford uh, didn't want to keep concentrated on longitudinal dynamics, just accelerating. No, it's how it behaves on the racetrack. And the Ford Focus RS 500 is another limited edition that came out. And the 500 doesn't talk about the horsepower, it's the number of the cars driving around, so 500. And um, black car wrapping, only available in matte black and optional red leather Recaro seats and 460 newton meters and 350 horsepower instead of these 305 that you have here. Now, um, what I want to know from Michael is um, how he thinks about the longitudinal dynamics because it's 5.9 seconds from 0 to 100 in that car, so 0 to 62 miles, and the RS500 does it in 5.6, so even that is not really so fast for 350 horsepower combined with that weight. Michael, have you ever had the experience that a car, which is obviously slower than yours on the paper, made you nervous in the rear mirror or just even was faster than you? Or is that just some rumors on the paper that the Ford Focus RS is a bit slower while accelerating and less than you expected from 305 horsepower? Well, I've really made an experience like that as a friend of mine has a Mondeo with 250 horsepower and the Mondeo with its 250 horsepower was really faster than my car. It was not really faster so much, but it was faster. So he truly was faster. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, and that's why I said, okay, 305 horsepower is not enough for me. And that's why I needed to optimize the car. And that's why I let my friend just write that ECU program. And ever since then, of course, my friend with the Mondeo doesn't have a chance anymore. But this is again something what even the new Ford Focus RS has to fight with, which, uh, though it has 350 horsepower all wheel drive drift mode, again, only 19 seconds from 0 to 200, which is really scaringly slow for a car with that horsepower. So before we talk about too much theories, we wanted to do the practical test on the Autobahn. Luckily we here in Germany have a speed limitless Autobahn, just to see how his Ford Focus RS, with its claimed 340 horsepower, accelerates from 100 to 200. Bear in mind, we're two adult men, and maybe the street goes uphill, we couldn't test it on the opposite side as there was some speed limit. But to have a first impression this is quite perfect like this, because there is no more exact way to measure this than with a GPS measuring tool. Sixteen 
2.9 seconds from 100 to 200, which is almost stock acceleration. So I think this Focus RS hasn't reached its 305 horsepower originally, and now with a tune, 310 or 315 horsepower maybe. I have to say, it's against something like with the interior. You excuse it because that car is so special that you say, okay, I don't give a damn about it. You know, it's it's not as fast as, I don't know, say up there on Cupra R maybe, which we tested in the last one of the previous videos, but it looks a lot better. It's, it's a legendary car. So, so what I can definitely say is it's an eye catcher. So independently from where you drive, if it's in a city, everyone's turning around his head. It's an eye and ear catcher. So it happens quite often that the people are staring at you on the streets, aren't they? Well, often is understated because every time I'm passing by someone, they're staring at me. The only people who don't really like me are cyclists because sometimes the exhaust plops a little bit, just a little, little bit. And then they show me some mean things in the rear mirror, but you know, I don't give a damn, it's legal and they can't say anything against it and it makes fun. The classifications of this car, just when driving that curve, that curvy exit of the Autobahn, is um, that it has a front differential. No? It had a front differential. Right. Um, combined with uh, the McPherson um, suspension and the Revol knuckles, and these Revol knuckles are just um, relaxing the McPherson uh, suspension when you drive the car harder. And this is one reason why this car is so damn good on the auto uh, on, on the racetrack and it really pushes forward god damn it but you have to work with the steering wheel as the most strong basic so you really need to work with the steering wheel when giving full throttle yeah it's front wheel drive with 450 460 newton meters and it's quite normal this is the driving experience that I love about cars like that. You need to work. It's not as easy just if you take a Golf R maybe with its 310 horsepower now with the facelift. It has all wheel drive, DSG, double clutch gearbox. You drive it and it's just easy to drive it. Yeah, but this one is not easy to drive. It's, it's challenging you. And this is why it's it, the name RS. So when talking about the price, you have uh, 70,000 kilometers run and I saw one of these for 22 today, so between 22 and 25,000 euros. Yeah, mine would be about between 24, 25,000 euros and it's really stable in value, I have to say, because of the five cylinder, one of the last five cylinders on the market coming from Volvo and it's really stable and you don't really have problems with that. And this is actually the question that I wanted to ask you. What kind of problems did you have in the past years? Well, in 70,000 kilometers, just a gasket at the differential and nothing else. It's about 150 euros, what we're talking about now. So after 70,000 kilometers, 150 euros, I mean, excuse me, dear ladies and gentlemen, this is really fantastic so the new focus rs has to prove itself um if it's really as stable as the previous one with his five cylinder but anyway it's not comparable um, would you give away yours for a new mk3 with a 2.3 liter eco boost and four cylinder and all-wheel drive no i mean of course it'll be better for a child and my wife that would be easier with the four doors. But in the end, it's not an RS, so no rally sports car anymore. If you're just thinking about getting one of these cars, um, think about it carefully. We have advantages, disadvantages between both. Both are not really the longitudinal dynamic monsters. So when you want to drive a car, what's quick on the autobahn, you have to get something else. But if you want to drive a car, that has the most emotions, um, the most stunning optics, um, and that gorgeous sound, then there's no way passing by the Ford Focus RS MK2 with its five cylinder, and it has uh, a stable, it's stable in value, just like Michael already said. So it's about 22, 25,000 euros, depending on the kilometers, uh, but it's not gonna go below that, I think. 
if you want to have a more stable in value thing then you have to get the RS500 of course because as it's limited to 500 pieces uh, it's more expensive and the cheapest on the European market is uh, I've just checked it 40,000 euros so not really so much of losses when you think of the years that passed ever since then it's it's a dirty uh, rough performance car for driving curves and you know that the front differential is quite yeah it's just it has a bit of a wheel spin but again you have to work with the steering wheel it's fantastic so this is a pure car and I think no other car will give you that kind of feeling that this gives you and forget about the interior quality forget about longitudinal dynamics it's so special from the exterior from from the optics from the sound that I I, I really have to think slowly of getting myself one of these cars 11.2 liters is the fuel consumption average now which is okay just let's be honest it's minor them I mean, if you take a Golf R or the Seat Leon Cooper 300, the new one, if you drive them fast, and you do so, because why else shall you buy a car like that, then it doesn't make a difference if it's 10.5 or 11.2 litres, it doesn't make a difference. And 11 litres for a five-cylinder, which is not really new, from 2010 or 2009, so it's really okay, that fuel consumption. Now, let me know, what does it consume on driving constant speed? Well, a lot less than 10 litres, so it's really okay for that fun that you have with it. So you shouldn't be watching the money because you only live once and in the end it doesn't count. So you shouldn't be thinking about that so much. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, this is the motto, Michael's motto, you only live once. Um, but if you drive a car like that, you have to say you only live once. It's really special and like that I want to get to my conclusion uh, about the Focus RS MK2. It's comfortable even on longer trips. It's uh, really purism, so uh, it's, it's pure driving experience and uh, the sound is fantastic. Everything is fantastic, so what to say about uh, the Ford Focus RS MK2. You wouldn't just give it away for, for the new one, as you could hear, though of course it's uh, four-wheel four drive and uh, even a bit bigger with its four doors because this one was exceptionally delivered with two doors, but that makes it again look a bit sportier in the end. So um, I can recommend you this car. I wouldn't have expect, uh, expected it to be that um, rally-like and everyone is looking at you even from cars which are a lot more expensive <laughs> that guy from the Audi A8 is just watching us so um, well if you're if you're someone who wants to have the red carpet everywhere then this car is the perfect one he just put pulled down his window because he wanted to hear the car <laughs> unfortunately we're standing at a red light now or green light and driving slowly but um, I think we can envy Michael because he owns a fantastic car and if you own a Ford Focus RS with that five cylinder don't ever give it away. This is what I recommend you um, because you're going to regret it. This is Carmania, don't forget to subscribe please and this is the biggest favour that you can do me uh, with that amazingly impressive car, Carmania legend, the Ford Focus RS 2.5 five cylinder. Thank you very much for watching. Danke dir. Mit